The Economist ran this story. I thought it was kind of a, a, a fun story, right? Why China is awash in unwanted milk. Milk. Why does China have so much milk? Prices have plummeted, right? They've gone down from, um, you know, uh, uh, just after COVID, they were at something like uh, uh, 4.5 yuan per kilogram to close to 3 per kilogram. Well, to understand this, one has to go back to 2018. In 2018, the Chinese central planners, in their wisdom, decided that milk was indispensable to the health of the Chinese people and therefore to a strong nation. Um, and they decided they had to boost China's milk production and milk consumption. Uh, and uh, the Chinese, uh, by doing so, would become fitter, healthier by consuming dairy products. Of course, dairy products rich in protein and calcium. And as a result of this, as this central planner's dedication to the health of the Chinese people, uh, China established subsidies for herds of cows for milking. And uh, they urged state propagandists to, quote, nurture the habit of consuming daily products, dairy products, dairy products. Um, and the campaign has achieved some of the goals. China's milk production has risen by a third. Last year, the country's cow yielded 42 million tons of milk. Uh, that surpassed the target, a government target of 42 million tons of, uh, sorry, uh, which surpassed uh, the target, whatever that target was. But, you know, Chinese are not big milk drinkers. The average Chinese person still consumes only about 40 kilograms of dairy products a year. They're not big into cheese. They're not big into milk. They're not big into Greek yogurt. It's called Greek yogurt, not Chinese yogurt, for a reason. Um, and, you know, the Chinese consume about a third of global average. The French consume three times the average, and the Chinese confuse, consume a third. Um, and they consume 40% less than what the Chinese health authorities have decided they need to produce. So production's gone up, but consumption hasn't really gone up that much. What happens? Increased supply. Demand is not there, though. It, it, the supply increased completely artificially because, because of what? Because the government decided it needed to, because the government subsidized it. So prices have dropped about 30% since August of 2021. The cost now, the, the price of a kilogram of raw milk is below the cost of production for a lot of farms. The consequence of this, of course, is already that farms are losing money in spite of being subsidized, which means that the government will either have to allow them to go bankrupt, which will shrink the supply of milk and markets will adjust, or they will increase the subsidy, which is what central planners typically do. Now, one of the questions the article raises is, why are the Chinese not consuming more milk? What's wrong with it? Why don't they drink more milk? <laughs> and as a start, Chinese are genetically predisposed to, be into to lactose intolerance. You know, many, many people around the world uh, are disposed to lactose intolerance. Uh, tolerance for lactose is something that developed evolutionarily relatively late in humans. Because milk, uh, cows for dom domestication of cows for milking is relatively late development. Uh, in the Mongolian steeps, um, you know, uh, uh, they, they herded cattle, but dairy products are not a big part of traditional, outside of the Mongolian steeps where, where they herd cattle. It's just not part of the Chinese diet. It never has been. 
They they never understood in in you know when the when the Europeans drank a lot of milk in the 19th century. They were exposed to Europeans for the first time. They didn't understand it. They think it's disgusting. Uh, anyway, the Chinese government is dedicated to um, changing these habits. I'm not sure what they're going to do about the genetics. Maybe they can genetically modify the Chinese people to not be lactose intolerant in order to consume more milk so that their farms won't go bankrupt. I'm not sure what comes first. Uh, but anyway, that is, that is another example. If you need one more example in the gazillion list of examples that exist out there um, of the stupidity of central planning, here's another one. Uh, Chinese people generally don't buy much exotic food stuff. They don't, they also, you know, they're, they're, right now they're in economic trouble. They're, they're not spending a lot of money. Um, there's not a lot of, uh, they don't have a lot of babies. So there's no demand for infant formula much that's made from cow's milk. Um, most stuff that's overproduced, if you will, was produced more than the domestic consumption will bear, is exported. It's hard to export milk products, primarily Chinese milk products. Who wants Chinese cheese? Not exactly a reputation. It's not exactly a reputation. Also, there was a scandal years ago of a Chinese company that um, that it that where uh, what do you call it? Uh, milk powder, I think. Milk powder had. Melamine and, and six babies died and hundreds of thousands of babies fell ill. People just don't trust Chinese milk products. That's not what they so There's no way to export them. Central planning gone amok. But next time, I, I, really next time, we'll get it right. I promise. I, I, we got, we, this time, we, we get it. This time, the people are smarter. This time, we, we, we asked ChatGPT. So... It's definitely much, much better because ChatGPT, I mean, God, ChatGPT knows, knows how to centrally plan better than you guys.